Morning, it's Paul here, Bearded Badger, publishing on books in uh, Belpa, in beautiful Derbyshire. Um, welcome to the Friday feature. If you're not familiar with the Friday feature, where have you been? I've been living in a cave or Anyway, it's just me waffling on about books, which is um, kind of what I do. So, just doing in front of the camera on a Friday. So, um, let's crack on, shall we? The first book I'm going to pick... Um, the news this week has been dominated by the awful scenes from uh, Kabul, Afghanistan, which, you know, you, you, I don't know how you can't be affected by this. So my first book is kind of a little bit influenced by that in many ways, and it's this one. It's Refugee Tales, uh, which was edited by David Hurd and Anna Pinkers, published by the wonderful Comma Press, Manchester-based, and um, we're not that against them, but uh, I'm joking. Great publisher, we haven't, put, we haven't mentioned any of their books yet on the Friday feed, so this is the debut for them, so sorry about that, but comma, we'll get more of your books on, I like you a lot. This book, anyway, back to business, this book is um, it's a series of stories, as the, as the title suggests, um, told from a refugee's perspective, told by refugees, two prominent writers, for example, Ali Smith's one of the writers that's um, transcribed these stories into the into short story form for the book um and it, it's a cracking read it, i read this about 18 months two years ago well worth a read it's 9.99 all profits go to uh refugee charities so um i mean maybe buy direct from comma maybe you know that's the, the right thing to do on this one and get some uh, get some cash into the pot for that so um fantastic collection of stories you can't help but be moved by them. They're, they're fantastic, really, really good collection. Um, I say nine ninety nine, and you're doing a good thing. So, and we all need to do good things. Uh, the next book I'm going to talk about is a book called "Fucked at Birth" by Dale Mah Maharich. Um, this was published by an unnamed press. Now that that's what they called an unnamed press, and um, they're a US-based publisher. I think in LA. I might be wrong on that. Um, and we've got a couple of their books in actually. I've, I've recently become uh, aware of them, and this I've read this one week before last, and it's it's basically looking at the um, well recalibrating the American dream for the 2020s. So it's looking at the impact of COVID really on the U U.S. economy, and does the American dream still apply? Uh, so it looks at the homeless situation, and it looks at how COVID m has affected. Um, those on the lower rungs of, of, of the pay scales, if you like. So um, it's quite an interesting read because, it, you know, as it, a lot more people are working from home and things like that now, um, you do sort of realise how pri what a, it's quite a privileged position to be able to do that because there's a lot of jobs, and it's particularly the jobs that don't get paid so much. They just can't, they can't do that. You know, the cleaners, the, you know, the... the the night security guards, the coffee shop, you know, barista servers, the hospitality servers, those sort of, you know, they're, re they're also, these roles are going to be massively affected by reduction in, you know, office footprint and, and, and that sort of thing. So it's going to, it does give you a, a lot of food for thought, this book. Um, and, and Dale Maharaj wrote a book probably 20 years ago, I think it was now, um, and off the back of it, Springsteen read it. Bruce Springsteen and um, wrote a couple of songs for the ghost of Tom Joad so he's a, he's a writer a real pedigree you know and um, I definitely recommend that one it's a tenor in the shop brilliant brilliant well worth a read so staying in the US I'm going to talk about this book Mark Lanigan sing backwards and weep now if you're not familiar with Mark Lanigan he was the singer in a grunge band called Screaming Trees back in the early 90s, late 80s, uh, early 90s, who were from Seattle and um, based around that whole Seattle sort of scene where you've got bands like Nirvana, Mud Honey, stuff like that. And um, Lanigan, the proper character, and the book really portrays him as a proper character. And um, it, I got to sort of... I read this last year, but it reminded about it because of watching an episode of uh, Anthony Bourdain where he goes to Seattle and he meets up with Lanigan. And um, so I thought, oh, that, that's a good book to recommend because it's a fantastic read. And it reminds me, you know, he, he, he struggled with addiction, he, he really struggled with heroin. Um, 
you know, as as did a lot of musicians like Cobain and Co. Um, so you've got to question how how much of this is true and how much of it is, uh, you know, a memory based on a, on a conversation rather than an actual vivid sort of recollection of what happened. Which reminded me a little bit of um, a book by a fellow called James Fray, A Million Little Pieces, which was probably about twenty years ago now, aren't it? And um, where similarly from written from a position of a recovering uh, addict, and he. Um, he was took apart by Oprah Winfrey on the book. She, she loved the book, but then transpired some of it might not be 100% actu- accurate. And she just took him apart. And um, he was sort of, well, you know, I was in a pretty pretty desperate place. And so maybe some of my recollections aren't as, as vivid as, as I perhaps thought. I think that might be the same for Mark's book. Cracking read nonetheless. So you need to get on that one. It's 9.99, White Rabbit Books. Absolutely recommend it if you're into that whole grunge scene, music generally, or and, and people with a bit of character, because he definitely fits that bill. So, the last book, um, and I'm staying on the theme of addiction actually, it's this one, The Outrun by Amy Lipchot, published by Canon Gate as part of their Canon's range, which, which is a great range of books I might add, and um, they do a lot of really good stuff. Um, and this one, it's sort of Amy sees Amy again struggling, it's biographical, struggling with um, addiction, returns to Orkney. She's in her 30s by this point, might even be 30, and um, finds herself back in Orkney. It's about how she reconnects with nature, reconnects with the, the, the wild, if you like, and um, uh, as a way of sort of balancing out again and, and, and recovering. And uh, I've got chatting about this book to a customer actually last week and we um, she was looking for something along those lines and I recommended this book and um, I also recommended a piece of music to her which I'm going to do for you guys as well and it's um, by a composer or musician called Erlen Cooper um, who's also from Orkney and um, it's a piece of music he, re- he wrote called Sol and Goose uh, an album he wrote Sol and Goose which is the first part of a triptych of albums about Orkney and the, he wrote them because he he's a, has a lot of musicians based in London and um, the anxieties of living in such a busy congested city versus growing up where he grew up in Orkney where obviously there's a, it's a lot less congested by a long chalk. So he wrote this album off the back of tra- something to transport him back there. It's a beautiful piece of music. Um, each song's named or each track's named after a bird uh, I mean it, it's modern classical for the want of a better phrase it's beautiful honestly it's beautiful listen to it no words in it so you can read along beautiful so yeah that'd be a good afternoon for you actually get get a copy of the out room put a bit of sol and goose on um, a great way to uh, spend your afternoon so that's the um, that's the four books for this week um what else is going on oh we had a lovely visit to the shop last saturday from all her own who wrote to par and um all and i have conversed a bit on, on on twitter and what have you but we got to meet face to face for the first time uh last saturday and she's every bit as lovely as i thought she was going to be which is nice and um, her book's fantastic and she was um managed to convince to sign a few copies so we've got Three copies of Par in the shop. Great book. We've also still got some Matt Cook signed copies of Life on Other Planets. I'd make a great resume, wouldn't I? And a Stormfront on Life on Other Planets there. And that'll be with an intersperse of Par. Anyway, um, two books there. I did that the wrong way around. Two books there that signed um, in the shop. We are doing a 10% sale. Um, today and tomorrow uh, it's been really quiet actually in the shop this week it's been a quiet august to be honest um which is which isn't untypical for retail but um hopefully things will pick up we've got um 10 percent off coming in we'll give you 10 percent uh just in store if you're buying online and thank you for those that have done the last week we've got a load of quite a few orders out this week on that um, it's still free UK postage till the end of the month, so you're getting a bit of a discount there, really. 
yin and yang weighs itself out. Um, what else is going on in Belper on Saturday? It's Pride, so um, it's not as big an event as we've we've had previously because of COVID, and and obviously that that massively affected the planning phases. But um, there's still bits going on. Um, well worth coming down to the town. It's a lovely town anyway, to be honest. So um, hopefully I'll see one or two of you in the shop. We're open today, ten till five. Tomorrow, ten till five. Come and say hello. Um, make a make a badger happy. I don't know if that, that's a thing. Maybe it is. Um, but yeah, come down, come say hello, and get ten percent off. Ten percent, a lot. What would you get for ten percent? And um, hopefully we'll see a few of you down. If we don't, then um, I'll cry in a corner. But I'll still wish you a happy weekend, and I hope everybody's all happy and safe. And um, we'll do a bit of waffling on Wednesday, shall we? Have a good one. Take care, folks.